The next step in free radical polymerization is propagation. And remember, this mechanism involves taking active chains that are of different lengths and having them add a monomer to form another active chain that is one monomer longer in degree of polymerization than the previous chain. So remember, uh, in terms of the kinetics, uh, we said that each of these steps, each of these processes is assumed to have the same rate constant, k sub p, which is the propagation rate constant. So we can write an overall uh, rate law for this process in terms of the sum of each of these reactions that are taking place. So for example, a uh, one monomer unit active chain adds a second monomer, so that's this step here. Uh, a two monomer unit active chain uh, adds a monomer and so forth, up to an I unit long polymer chain adding an, a monomer. And the sum of all these processes can be related to the rate of consumption of monomer M. So when we do this, when we write the expression in this way, then notice that we can factor out the product of the rate constant for propagation and the monomer concentration. So we have the product of Kp times monomer concentration times the sum of concentrations of all these active chains uh, in our sample. So we can express that sum uh, as just one quantity, m dot, representing the total concentration or the total number or the total quantity uh, of active chains uh, that are present. So when we do that, then we can write our rate law as follows. The rate of propagation is equal to the propagation rate constant times the monomer concentration times the total concentration of active chains in the sample. The final step in free radical polymerization is termination. And remember that we said there's two possible ways that this process can occur. Uh, so if we have two active chains uh, of length i and j, those two chains can combine uh, to form one dead chain that has a total length that's equal to the sum of the length of chain i and chain j. So that's what I've denoted here, di plus j, where d uh, indicates dead polymer uh, as opposed to active polymer. So this no longer contains uh, a radical group, so it can no longer, uh, it's no longer actively growing. Another possibility uh, is that these two chains, active chains of length i and j, could both terminate individually to form two dead chains of length i and, I and j. So this mechanism is called disproportionation. Uh, and each of these two processes can be thought of to have their own rate constant, uh, termination by combination and termination by disproportionation. But the key point is that one process produces one dead polymer from two living polymers, and the other process uh, produces two dead polymers from two living polymers. So let's think about how we could represent this in a kinetic framework. Uh, the overall rate of termination we could write in terms of the rate of consumption of active chains, and then we can just add up the rate kinetics or rate law associated with the kinetics of each of these steps. So for combination, uh, we have two active chains that combine with some rate constant, uh, and that is proportional to the product of these concentrations of active chains i and j, and similarly for the disproportionation step. So we can factor out then uh, these rate constants times the square of the total concentration of active chains in the system. By convention, we can also combine these two individual rate constants into an overall rate constant associated with the termination process and then come up with the following rate law. The rate of termination is equal to 2 times this overall rate constant times the concentration of active chains or the quantity of active chains squared.